walk you through the steps on how to create your rainy day project on Photopea online so you don't have to use Photoshop. So the first thing you need to do is to get this rainy day picture onto Photopea. And so if you can open both of them at the same time, you should be able to drag and drop your picture right into Photopea. If that doesn't work, you can download this picture to your Google Drive. So you go right here, open a new window, and then you'll hit the download. Mine looks different on my Mac, but once you hit download here, it should come up on your Chromebook for a place where you can save it. Navigate to your Google Drive. Don't save this in your Chromebook downloads. It's kind of hard to find those files sometimes. So I would really recommend in your Google Drive making an interactive media folder so you have a spot to save any files that you do for my class on your Chromebook. So once you're in Photopea, we're gonna walk through the steps of how to make this little girl look like she's really having a bad day and walking home in the rain. So the first thing you're gonna do is use the polygonal lasso tool to crop out her legs down at the bottom here. We wanna make it look like she has a reflection right here because if it's raining, there would be water on the ground and it'd be reflecting right here. So I'm gonna go up to my toolbar, the third tool down is the lasso, Hold that down so I get the polygonal lasso tool. I do not want the other two, I want the middle one, polygonal lasso. I'm gonna click on that one. And then I'm gonna zoom in on my picture. I'm doing command plus sign to zoom in. And then I'm gonna start selecting the little girl from about halfway from her book bag down. So I'm gonna click, and then you can kind of see my selection tool here as I slowly work my way around the outside of her book bag strap. And I wanna get an entire selection. And when you use a polygonal lasso tool, it's a very straight edge tool. So you have to click multiple times to get a curve. And so it's okay if this takes you a little bit. I would rather it take you a longer amount of time than you to have really rough edges or jagged points. So you're just gonna take your time and work your way all the way around. You're gonna go around her pink pants, up into to cut out all this concrete up here. And so I'm just making a very slow selection, getting working around all these curves. And if I mess up, if I don't like the selection I just made, if I kind of cut off her pants a little bit, I can hit the delete key. And that will not delete my selection, it'll just delete the last couple points that I've made. And so then I can retrace my steps and work that curve a little bit better because I didn't want to cut off her pants the way that I had that. So I'm gonna keep working around her foot here, trying to go as slow as I can, especially around these curves to make sure I'm getting a nice, smooth selection. And then we're gonna work our way up to the top and then we're gonna get that last strap and then we'll copy and paste out our selection. But we have to make sure we get a close selection and I'll show you what the mouse looks like when we get to the, to the starting point so you can see what a close selection will be. I'm gonna work all the way up the strap and then I'm working my way back to the top and then once I get back to the top here, you can see I'm gonna connect back and then I have a selection that now is on around my um, little girl picture. It's closed now because it's linked together. I'm gonna do edit, copy, and then edit, paste. And most likely on your Chromebook, that's probably control C, control V. And so you get a brand new layer that looks just like this. And I can hide this background layer by closing that eyeball. And so now I just see layer one here that is her legs. And I wanna get rid of this concrete right here. So I'm using that same polygonal lasso tool and I'm gonna trace out this concrete right here to have that not be part of my image. So I'm gonna go all the way around here and then I'm going to connect back I get my selection, and then here, since all I need to do is delete, I'm just gonna hit the delete key on my keyboard. And then one big shortcut to know is if you have a selection, you need to undo that selection before you move on. It's gonna be select and then deselect, or for you on your Chromebook, control C, or control D, I'm so sorry, control D, or command D on a Mac. And so I no longer have a selection, and I have my layer one, well, I wanna reflect this so it looks like her reflection underneath her feet. So I'm gonna go up to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertically. And so now if I show my background layer again and get my Move tool, this top tool, I can move her feet down to kind of line up with her bottom of her other feet and it looks like a reflection, like if this was a rainy day, we would see her reflection below. Now I need to lower the opacity of this, the amount that this picture gets to be see-through so that it looks like a real image. 
So I'm gonna go to 60%. This is your opacity right here. So you can lower the opacity and hit return, and it already looks like a faded out reflection of her feet. Now we wanna add some blur and smudge to make it look like it's really raining. So I'm going to merge these two layers together. I don't wanna use the blur tool ever unless I have two layers that I'm trying to blur together. So I'm gonna right click on this layer right here and merge down. So I now have one layer of the little girl with her book bag at the bottom. I'm gonna come over here and get the blur tool. This one right here looks like an eye drop or a water droplet. And then I can check the size of my brush. There's the size of my brush, 15's about right. Um, on a Mac, we have a, a shortcut, the brackets by your P key. Oh, they should work on Photo P on your Chromebook too. The brackets beside the P key will increase or decrease the size of your brush or your blur tool. And we're going to come underneath her feet and make it look like she's stepping into water. So I'm going to blur out underneath her feet. And you might have to go back and forth a couple times to get that blur to work, but we're basically mixing both of those two pictures together to make it look like she's stepping into the water. You can kind of see that effect. I'm also going to zoom in and along her pants at the bottom, I'm going to blur out all the edges of her pants because I don't want those to look like a solid picture. They should be in water, so they should be very blurry and fuzzy. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna switch to my smudge tool, so the bottom one right here, the smudge tool. And now I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger, so I'm using that bracket by the um, P key, the farther one to the right, and I'm going to pull the straps and just make it look a little bit smudged out and look like it's part of a rainy picture. And if you don't like how that looks, I'm not really sure I really like how that looks, I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna do Command um, Z or Control Z probably on your um, Chromebook. I'm gonna try this again. I think I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and just pull smaller sections of this so it just kind of warps it a little bit to make it look like it's moving back and forth in the water. I think I like that subtle effect a little bit better than how I liked it the first time. So I'm gonna try it over here on this strap and pull it this way and then pull it this way and back. And then after I've done the smudge tool, I can go up and blur it again so that all those edges are really fuzzy and softer because again, this should be in water. So we really don't want any harsh edges, especially that harsh little square right there. I wanna make sure I blur that out really good. So now if I zoom back out, you can really see that, okay, those straps look different than the top ones. They've kind of created a blur effect or a, a wavy effect with the water. So I'm gonna do that exact same process with the um, trees at the top. So I have two trees right here and I have this pole. I'm gonna do those steps again to use the polygonal lasso tool to select them. I'm gonna reflect and then I'm gonna blur them out. So I'm gonna do one pole and then I'll kind of fast forward and do the other two really quickly so that you can watch the next step so we can make it rain. So polygonal lasso, I'm going to grab this pole right here to make, once I make my selection, you can see that the selection's made there, I'm gonna do Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V, because I wanna edit, copy, edit, paste, and I have it in its own layer. Then I'm gonna use my Move tool. I did a shortcut, I used the V key to move to the Move tool. I'm gonna pull it down, but I didn't reflect it, and I need to reflect it, so I'm gonna go up to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertically, and so then now I have the bottom lined up with the bottom. Well, I don't really want that tree to be in the grass right here. I don't want to reflect in the grass. So I'm going to grab a new tool that you haven't used before, the eraser tool, and erase out any part that's in the grass because I only want to reflect it in the concrete. So then now with this, it should be a pretty subtle effect, so I really need to lower the opacity way down. I think I'm going to go down to 20%. And really, you can already see it's just a very faded image. But before I blur this, I need to merge down my layers. I'm gonna right click and merge down. 
And so then now I can get my blur tool and I can really blur out the edges. I might get a pretty big brush for this. Blur out the edges so it's just a very subtle, quick um, effect. So I'm going to do that same process now with the other two trees. And as you're watching these videos, if you want to pause it and start working on yours and then come back and see what I do next, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to watch this all the way through. You can, um, whoa, that is not what I wanted to do there. I needed to do my selection. So I went to the wrong menu. I need to go to edit, transform, flip vertically. Now I have my tree. I need to erase the top part. And I switch tools very quickly because I use my shortcuts. I hit the E key to get the eraser. Then I'm gonna lower the opacity down to 20. And then I'm gonna right click and merge down. And then get my blur tool. Blur tool doesn't have a shortcut, so I can't do that one as fast. Okay, one more tree to do. I hit L to grab my lasso tool quickly. And double click, I can close my selection. Command C, Command V, hit the V key so I can move this down. I, that switches me to my move tool. Edit, transform, flip vertical. Line these up. E key to get my eraser. And then I'm going to merge down. Oh, I'm not gonna merge down yet. I'm actually going to lower the opacity. So once that happens, I'm gonna undo. I need to change the opacity to 20 before I merge it down. Definitely have to do that before you merge it down. The merge down is pretty final. So you can't go back and lower the opacity of a layer once it's merged down because it creates it into that, that bottom layer. You can no longer manipulate it by itself. Still have my eraser, so I need to get the blur. Blur this out. All right, I'm really liking the effect of how that looks. I feel like those are really good reflections. This looks like a great reflection. So now I'm gonna add some rain to this picture. I need to add a brand new layer. So their new layer button is down here, new layer. And on this layer, I'm gonna new, use a new tool that we've never used before. I'm gonna use the brush tool. So that's this tool right here. And then I wanna see on Photopea if I can get to window and then brush. I should get some menus over here for different types of brushes. And so I wanna to try to get a, a pretty good splatter brush. And so I'm just looking to see if, what options they have. I think I'm gonna try this number seven, see if this one will work. And I need it to be pretty big. I'm gonna use it really as a stamp and not as a um, brush. So you can see the size of my brush right here. So I think 129 is fine. Um, somewhere between 100 and 125. I think that'll probably work just fine. I need to make sure my color is white, so I can see right here my color is going to be white. I can close out of this brush window. I'm on a brand new layer. This is important with the rain. You need to be on a brand new layer. And then I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see, I'm going to click and stamp. So I'm clicking once, clicking again, clicking again. And so I'm stamping, not dragging. So I'm stamping that rain across the top. And so it doesn't really look like rain right now. It kind of looks like snow and just a disaster, but that's okay because I put it on this layer five, now I can transform it to stretch it to look like rain. So I'm gonna go to edit and then free transform. Be careful, it's not command T or control T like we're used to in Photoshop. It's actually um, option command T on a Mac, probably option control T on your Chromebook, but you need a free transform. And then you're gonna pull this rain all the way down and stretch it out. And I might even pull it up to the top. And then rain doesn't normally come down straight, so I'm going to go to the corner. I'm gonna do a little bit of a rotation. And then stretch this out, stretch this out. And then now I have a pretty good rain effect. It's just way too much. And so I hit return to place it. I'm gonna lower the opacity down to probably 15. And so that makes it a really subtle rain effect. I probably could go up maybe a little bit to 20 on that one. So I have some rain. It looks like it's raining on top of her book bag, raining on top of her. It really covers up our um, reflections really well, having that rain come down. We're gonna do one more effect. I'm gonna hit the new layer button one more time. So I have a new layer here. 
So this is our background. This should be our rain. I can even name these. So that's my rain layer. And this is gonna be darkness. So we're going to make it look a little bit darker. So on this top layer, I'm gonna get my fill bucket. It could be underneath your gradient tool. So you might have to go down to your paint bucket tool right here. I want this top color now to be a really dark blue. So I'm gonna click on the white box and I'm going to get to blue, but then I want a very, very dark navy, almost black blue and I'm gonna hit okay. And then with that fill bucket, I'm just gonna click one time and I'm filling this entire layer with blue. I'm just trying to make a darker tone to my picture and there's lots of way to do this. This is just the easiest. And then I'm gonna lower my opacity to about 20, or 10, I'm sorry. And so you can hide and show this just to see the difference. It just darkens up my picture just a little bit. So now you're finished with this image. You've created a rainy day picture with the little girl. What I would like you to do now is to do the same exact effect to a picture of your choice. So you're gonna go look on the internet for a picture of people walking, of um, pictures that, uh, that are of yours. Just make sure you have room for a reflection. So if I would do a search right now for people walking, I could look on Google image search for all these different types of images. Just make sure this one wouldn't be a good idea because there's not very, many very much room below their feet to create reflections. This one could work out. You could create a reflection underneath this person. Just give yourself, and this would be even better because you have so much room to create the reflection of their um, them reflecting down into the rain and you can make it rain. So you can take any of these pictures, save them to your Google Drive, put them in Photopea. So if you have a picture in your Google Drive on your Chromebook, you should be able to go file open and then navigate to your Google Drive folders where you've saved your pictures too.